my dear brothers in Islam, today's khutbah is going to be about a day where everybody will be gathered there. A day where it is promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every person shall be raised up barefooted naked. This is the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبَرَى And when the greatest catastrophe will befall upon mankind. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called this day. He called it the greatest catastrophe that can ever befall. In many other verses in the Quran, He's called it al haqa al qariah the striking hour. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the greatest catastrophe. The greatest catastrophe that can befall upon mankind is the day of judgment. This is the day where everybody will remember what they did in this world. The greatest catastrophe that can befall mankind. On that day, so many things will happen. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it the greatest catastrophe. The greatest catastrophe. This day is called this day because of many things that happen on this day. Wallahi, there is nowhere to run on that day. There is nowhere to hide on that day. That day, the land will be a plain land. Flat, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. There will be so many people from the time of Adam السلام, to the end of time, everyone would have been resurrected. There'll be the people will be so many. They'll be like flies, moths scattering amongst each other, no direction. People running this way, people running that way, not knowing which way to run, not knowing which way to hide. The punishment of Allah is severe on that day. The sun will be on top of your head. There will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be scared. You will have fear from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not know which direction to go to. There will be no sleep 50,000 years long. There is no sleep or rest. 50,000 years you will stand and you'll be waiting for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. You'll be waiting to be judged. This greatest catastrophe that will befall will be so scary that can you imagine now that a little child, his hair will turn grey from what he will see. If you have a look at a child now, he has no worries at all whatsoever. He lives a carefree life. He doesn't care, runs around, maybe jumps, falls, hurts himself, breaks his arm doesn't care, hasn't got a care in the world. He loves life. He doesn't worry about paying the bills. He doesn't worry about putting a roof over someone's head. He hasn't got a care in the world. Can you imagine on that day from the horrors that he will see, his hair will turn grey. The woman that is pregnant will be brought back on the day of judgment pregnant and from the horrors that she will see, she will drop her load. The greatest catastrophe that can ever befall. Have we prepared ourselves for the greatest catastrophe? For the greatest day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it great. And wallahi it is great. No food. No water except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed His mercy upon. The greatest catastrophe that can befall mankind. Jinn and mankind. How scary is this day? And who has prepared himself for this day? The greatest catastrophe. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى When you're seeing all of these horrors, in front of you and you will witness it. 
Everybody will witness the horrors on the day of judgment. You will witness it. And on that day, you will say, it will be said, and that you will remember every single thing that you've done in this world. Every little thing and every big thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever does Adam's way of good will see it on that day. And whoever does Adam's way of evil will see it on that day. Will you, my dear brothers in Islam, you will also see, or you, you will also remember every single thing that you've done, from small to big. Remember, I stole such and such. Oh no, I remember I done this. Remember I done that. Remember I looked at this. Remember I stole that. Remember I didn't give the person that back. Remember this. Remember that. Remember, 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 remember. And you remember while you are still alive. Remember what you're going to remember on the greatest catastrophe. On a day that nothing will be left. Every small and big thing will be brought forth. And either you will be granted by the mercy of Allah into paradise or you will be from the other people. We seek refuge with Allah from being from those other people. You will remember everything. Everything. And I mean everything. You forget in this world. I done such as I such as I done this, I done that, I done this, I done that. But with time you forget. But with the horrors that you will see on that day, you won't forget. You will remember and you will think, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to forgive me for that? Or is he not? Allah Jahannam will be brought forth. Wajee ayawma idhin bi jahannam. Jahannam will be brought forth onto the day of judgment. Wallahi, it will be brought forth on the day of judgment. How would it be brought forth? 70,000 chains. And on each end of the chain, on each chain, 70,000 angels dragging it to the day of judgment. وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمِ Jahannam will be brought forth and everybody, everybody will witness Jahannam and you will remember everything that you've done in your past and the punishment of hell is in front of you. The punishment of hell is in front of you and you are remembering, remembering everything that you've done in your past. How are you going to be? How are you going to stand? How are you going to feel when you see Jahannam brought forth on the day of judgment and you can witness it? Jahannam, blazing fire. If the most extravagant person that ever lived on this world will be put into hell fire. He'll be dipped in it and taken back out. And he will say that I never have seen any pleasures ever in my life. Just one dip. Can you imagine witnessing it with your own eyes and seeing it and contemplating and thinking maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might cast me into the hellfire with those who get thrown into hellfire with the things which I have committed. What a scary day this will be. The greatest catastrophe. The greatest catastrophe that can befall ever. And as for those who rejected Islam and disobeyed the commandments of Allah and chose disbelief and chose the pleasures of this world and what it contains, then indeed Jahannam will be for him. It will be for him because he desired the lust and the love and he followed his lust and love of this world. 
and disbelieved in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this will be his abode place. And if I were to describe Jahannam to you, this is another khutbah on its own. 1,000 years till Jahannam became red. Another 1,000 years till Jahannam became white. And another 1,000 years before Jahannam turned black. 3,000 years boiling. Can you imagine the punishment of Allah and how severe this can be? This is the abode place for those who choose the lust and the desire and to disbelieve in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And as for those who feed their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did not follow or submit themselves to their desires for these people is paradise. And as for those who fear their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if they're, they're so, they're so, they have so much taqwa in them, that before they take their step, they think, is this step towards Allah or it's not towards Allah? Is it going to make Allah happy? Is it going gonna, gonna to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I come to grab something. Is it going to be pleasing to Allah if I grab it or go forth for it? Or is it going to be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They had taqwa. They had taqwa. They feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did not transgress the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people, this type of people who had this type of fear, who had this type of taqwa. They did not follow their desires. That indeed your soul, your desires, your lust orders you to do evil. Yes, it orders you to do evil. This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see something evil, maybe you want to look at it. When you see an easy way of making money, your heart tells you, just do it this time just so that I can grab that money and then I won't do it anymore. Your heart, your soul, your nafs, your desires order you to do evil. This is why there's such a thing called jihad or nafs to fight, to have that inner fight with your soul, to strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fight back your desires. And for the people who fight back their desires and do not submit themselves to the evil which their lust and desires orders them to do, then for them is Jannah. For them is Jannah. Why? Because it's so hard fighting your soul every single day when it orders you to do evil constantly. You fighting with yourself so that he can prevent you from doing any evil acts. For you is Jannah. And what will make you know what a Jannah is? In the lengthy hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in part of this hadith and then the two angels rose me up and then they went up to a higher place than what they were before and then they said look up and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked up and he said this is your house in paradise this is your palace in paradise so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at it and he could not believe his eyes and this is a man who did not desire this world and he did jihad al nafs and didn't want anything from this life except to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a man who didn't have no desires at all for this world. He took one glance at this castle, at this mansion and he said, allow me to enter it. Allow me to enter it. And the two angels said, not yet. Not yet. Can you imagine Jannah, a man who didn't desire this world, what took one look at the castle and wished that he could be in it. In Jannah, there is what no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard of, and nothing that has ever came to mankind. No one ever thought of anything that could be in there. Nothing that your brain can comprehend or your imagine could ever think of. This is Al Jannah, Al Jannah which is promised for the ones who have taqwa. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are from them.